I'd like to call the March 15th, 2021 Longmont Water Board meeting to order. Heather, could we please start with a roll call? Sure. Chair Williams? Here. Vice Chair Peterson? Here. Or Member Gould? She hear it? Allison, are you here? She is. I saw her. Why? Uh, board member Holwick? Here. Uh, board member Lang? Here. Ken Hewson? Present. Nelson Tipton? Here. Wes Lowry? Here. Kevin Bowden? Here. Francie Jaffe? Here. Um, Jason Elkins? Here. And Heather McIntyre is here. Council Member Martin? Here. And Allison, have you joined us yet? I'm not seeing where she is. She is on the call. Well, um, why don't we just, we, we can keep going and she can join yep. in. Um, <clears throat> thrown, may I threw her off with starting two minutes early, so I yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um, so the, the uh, next item, item three, is approval of the previous month's minutes. Um, we need a, um, a motion and a second um, and a vote on the February 22nd, 2021 meeting minutes. Has everybody had a chance to review? Are there any questions and comments on those minutes? I'll move to approve, Mr. Chair. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, a motion by Scott, a second by Roger. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. And I see Allison um, is on the, I can see her on the video. So welcome back. Uh, the next item, item four, is the water status report. Um, as Scott alluded to, I don't know if we really need to do that today, given the <laughs> storm, but maybe we'll, you can just <clears throat> we'll make it really you, Nelson. I'll make it really uh, short. How's that? Because <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely going to be short. So I'll just give you, because a lot of the gauges were, were frozen in or snowed in. Uh, the flow of the St. Brain Creek at Lyons uh, today is 50 5.4 CFS in the 24 year average is approximately 18 CFS for this date. Um, calling the St. Grand Creek is Highland Lake. Same as last, last month, admin number 8917. And the priority date is uh, May 31st, 1874. So call on the main stem that impacts district five is Riverside Reservoir. And the admin number is 26, 302 priority date um, January 5th, 1922. So Button Rock is currently at uh, 6397.7, which is 15,737 acre feet. Um, so it's 96.5% full. Uh, release in approximately 50 CFS now. So the regulating date is uh, is repaired, and I won't go into any details on that, just in case Dave Jason's going to give an update. But it is working. We're making releases. The Union Reservoir is at uh, approximately 19 feet um, down, roughly. It, that's approximately six seven thousand acre feet, so down approximately six thousand acre feet, and currently releasing nine and a half CFS. And that's that's all. Okay, are there questions for Nelson on the water status report? I'm not seeing any. Nelson, if I remember right, the flow on the St. Brain was about half of the historic average the last few months, and then it went up to about triple the historic flows. Is that about right? That, that's, yeah, because uh, but, Button Rock's uh, at regulating gate, like I said, is repaired, so we're, the city of Lama's making releases out of uh, Ralph Price Wizard now. But 50 CFS, so, so the flow is pretty much the same as of what it's been for the last three or four months now. Okay. Without, right. the, rele uh, without the releases. I see. Okay. So clear. All right. Um, any other questions? 
If not, we'll move on to item five, the public invited to be heard in special presentations. Heather, I believe there's no public invited to be heard. Is that right? That's correct. We have no one with us today. Okay, and um, any special presentations? We have none. Okay. All right, we'll move on to six. Ken, is there any agenda revisions or submission of documents? I have no uh, agenda revisions. We do have a little bit more information in the uh, drought plan that Wes will present uh, on screen, some of the snow tail graphs. Great, well, look forward to that. Um, uh, item seven, development activity. Once again, um, there is no development activity, is that right? That's correct. Okay. Moving right along, um, item eight under general business is the cash and lieu review, um, Wes. So <clears throat> what we've included in your board packet is the same type of information that's been in there in prior quarterly reviews. Um, there's been a small amount of Lake McIntosh and oligarchy ditch still trans acting at the same uh, cost per acre foot that it was transacting at your last meeting. Cost for new water supplies. Um, we were hopeful that we might have some updated Windy Gap firming project uh, data, but we don't have that at this time. We're hopeful that we'll have it for uh, the next meeting. Um, the other the other three items that, um, that we have on there, they remain unchanged um, based on the construction cost index. So what we really have that's new to this month for you guys to look at is that CBT allotment unit transfer cost. There were 60 units that were transacted in December at an average cost of $73,684 per acre foot. And then in January, 27 units at an average cost of $71,759 an acre foot. And then in February, there were 17 units at an average of $73,762 an acre foot. And so when we took the, uh, the weighted average of those Total cost was around seven, just over $73,000, $73,197. So it's actually went down slightly from the prior quarter. Um, but uh, one thing that probably might be of, of note, um, a couple of those transactions, one in January for uh, uh, was from a, a, a church to a, to a class uh, C, um, contract. So that might have possibly influenced a little lower price per unit. And then um, in February, there was 12 units that made up the bulk of what transacted in February. And that went from an irrigator out of an inactive account, also at 54,000 an acre foot. So um, so basically not a whole lot of change. Cash and loot or the, I'm sorry, the uh, CBT selling price went down slightly. Um, it's, it's, We've got some preliminary uh, March sales that are suggesting it's probably coming back up just slightly. But um, again, we don't have any any new information on the cost of new water supplies. So that's really all I have to report to the board uh, for this quarter. Okay, thanks Wes. Any questions for Wes on the cash and lieu? Um, do you know, Wes, it sounds like in the next month or two, you're gonna get a um, additional cost estimate for kind of ongoing Windy Gap um, activities um, while this litigation is pending. Is that right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll, and then I guess the follow-up question, are there other projects that you see on the development side that are going to be coming in in the near term? So um, one of the big things with Windy Gap is they're still trying to re, uh, renegotiate their contract for some of that work. And that's, I don't know how long that's going to take. Hopefully that renegotiated since we had to make a longer uh, time frame. not a hundred percent sure. I, again, I'm hopeful that I'll have updated numbers in the next quarter, but no guarantees. Um, as far as um, water rights coming in, there's um, there might be some cash in lieu. Um, and then there might be, be some um, some non-historic coming in. It, a lot of these projects have been sitting out there for quite a while, and they haven't yet decided to move yet on them. I don't, 
I'm not certain whether or not those will come through in the next month or so. Um, oftentimes when they've waited this late, they wait until uh, early summer. So if I get any of that though, that would, that would re be reflective in the native water or native base and water rights transactions. Um, um, so yeah, I, I really just don't, I don't have a real good finger on it, but there's not anything I know for certain that's coming in. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions on that? If not, um, I guess we will leave unless somebody has a comment. We currently have the price set at the, at the Windy Gap um, firming project cost of $17,683. Is that right, Wes? That's correct. Okay. So if um, I think we can leave it at that without any action, unless there's any questions, comments um, by the water board on that. Is everybody okay with leaving it um, yeah. at the current rate? I think it should be left at the current rate. It wouldn't make sense to change it at this point. Agreed. Um, okay, it sounds good. And then we'll revisit it. And we should hopefully have those additional, the, the revised costs when we revisit that at the next kind of regular session um, for the cash and lieu update. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Um, let me move on here. Um, so the next item is 8B, uh, water supply agreement with St. Brain and Left Hand Water Conservancy District. Ken? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, um, Mr. Chair, sorry, Ken, if I may, um, I needed to disclose publicly that I am general counsel for the Conservancy District and participated in the drafting of this uh, proposed agreement. So I'm going to sign off and you can let me know when I should come back in, Mr. Chair, or Heather, if she can. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Um, Heather, can you give a way to get a hold of Scott before he leaves to get him back on the, the call once we're past this item? Yes, I can email him. Okay. Sounds Thanks, good. We'll Heather. do that. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Super. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Chairman. So um, the item we have before you today is a water supply agreement between the city of Longmont and the St. Rain and Left Ham Water Conservancy District. This is actually a renewal of a lease we've been doing the last few years with the district. Um, the district operates an augmentation plan in the basin, augmenting out of priority depletions. Um, generally that's smaller depleters, people who have say a cabin in the mountains or pull, pull water out of a well to irrigate more, uh, a little bit larger area than you're able to with a domestic water well. So it's really, um, it, it's to, it's augmenting depletions that have been occurring for years and years. And rather than shut people off, they run a program where the river's made whole um, for that out of priority depletions. Um, that actually is a benefit to the city of Longmont because the water that they put back in the creek becomes available to all water users, including the city of Longmont. Um, so it, it helps keep the basin whole. Um, the, the district had a water storage reservoir uh, called Lake Number no. Four, located um, just east or west uh, and just a little bit south of McCall Lake. Um, during the flood of 2013, the flood um, went right through that lake, took it out. It's an old, it's a spent gravel pit. And so it took the, the lake out and they just did finish um, reconstruction of that lake um, this last year. In fact, they just did a liner test this winter. Um, and so they, they have that project up and, and running. And uh, if we're real lucky, uh, they'll come in priority and be able to store and they'll use actually Lake Four to augment the stream. One of the concerns they've had is that because of the, the drought, which this, you know, the snows helped quite a bit, but um, because of the drought, they were, they were concerned that they wouldn't be able to fill this year, wouldn't come in priority. And there's, there's gonna be a little bit of a timing issue for them whether or not they come in priority just because of uh, how much storage still needs to be filled, including Union Reservoir, as low as Union Reservoir is. And so we have 
worked out this agreement. Really, it's it's a kind of a win-win for both of us. It gets the district water they need for their AUG plan. It also gives Longmont um, direct water out of uh, out of Carter Lake CBT water, which we can use in our water treatment plant. So we we benefit by having that additional water supply. Um, we deliver the water. The water will be delivered out of Union Reservoir, and so that's water that's downstream that we currently can't get into our treatment plant other than by exchange, which is not real easy and probably would be fairly difficult this year. So our staff is recommending approval of this um, agreement. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of acre feet and, and even maybe less than in, is in the agreement. If, if the district can come in and get um, water uh, stored under Lake 4, but there's no guarantee, so this this helps make sure that they can keep their augmentation program running strong. So be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thanks, Ken. Um, any questions on the agreement? Roger? Yeah, Ken, just out of curiosity, when did this agreement first go into effect? How long have we had it? So um, in its current form, we've done it for two years. Um, this will be the third year. Um, or originally after 2013, the district was able to do a uh, temporary substitute supply plan and, and or, um, but you can only do that for five years. And so they basically used up their five years. Now, now that plan also involved Longmont releasing some water out of our system as well. Um, so, so really it's, it, we've been working with the district to try to help make sure their AUG plan um, maintains viable ever since the flood of 2013. And, and this is hopefully the last year um, that they'll have to have to do this now that their facility is, is up and running. Okay, thanks. Other questions or comments? Allison? Uh, yeah, this isn't specifically related to the contract, but I was wondering if we had any follow-up um, from the Conservancy District in regard to their um, budgeting um, on the, the uh, plan that we heard more about. When was it? January, December? Um, yes, actually, um, we have, and I'll talk about it under future agenda, uh, the future agendas, but we currently have the St. Brandon Left Hand Water Conservancy District scheduled to present to Water Board at the April Water Board meeting. Um, their stream management plan is done now, their, their tax is approved, and they are, their board is looking pretty hard at about how, how they uh, bring all that together. And they're they're ready to give us an update and talk about that plan, um, and they'll do that at the April meeting. So. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right. Um, if not, we need a motion to recommend the water supply agreement with Saint Brain Left Hand Water Conservancy District for approval by the City Council. I'll move. Okay, Kathy is making the motion. Roger, are you the second? Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Um, now we're on to 9A, which is a monthly water supply update. And um, I guess we get to hopefully have more good news, Wes. So you're <laughs> up. Yeah, so um, as everyone knows, we've we got some snow uh, finally, and that really did help us out. It it uh, it's it it didn't. Uh, I was kind of hoping for even more out of it, but in terms of water, it was really good. But I just want to hit a few of the highlights of uh, where we're at, and then I'm going to ask Heather to pull up after I do that. Um, I've got some graphs of some different snow tail sites. Um, that I wanted to just highlight. So um, 
as we talked about, Nelson kind of mentioned, we're starting to release some water out of the, or out of Button Rock. Um, uh, some of that water that's being released out of storage is uh, um, due back to the Highland Lake. They were in priority, but we were um, at the same time delivering some water to our water treatment plants. And, but we didn't have an ability to get that out of storage. So we worked with the state and um, been tracking that. And so that's kind of why we're, you're seeing a 50 CFS release out of Button Rock. It's, it's water that would have otherwise stored in, in Highland Lake already, but we're gonna have that water to them here by the end of the week and they'll be made whole. Then what we're gonna make a decision on is whether or not we're gonna continue to take some water out of Button Rock and put some of that previously stored fully consumable water into Union Reservoir. Nelson mentioned how far down it was, about 6,000 acre feet. Being an off channel reservoir, it takes a while to fill that. It's probably, it'd probably be a couple months to fill that. And um, so what we may do is actually move some of our decrees that are allowed to be stored in Union. And um, this month or early next month, um, move some of those that were or are currently stored in Button Rock and put those into Union. That'll help us leverage that time we, we kind of need. Then with Button Rock being on channel, um, we have nearly all of our changed water rights are able to store in there. And those can be stored at a much higher rate than you could in, in Union. And so we're doing some things administratively that'll put us in a good position to put uh, not only Button Rock filling but uh, also hopefully get Union much fuller than it might otherwise if we were only relating or uh, um, waiting for it to fill under its own decree or during runoff. So those are some things that we're thinking about and we'll report what we're doing a little more um, uh, next month. Um, I'll let Jason, when it's his turn to talk about the outlet repairs, we're really thankful to have that up and going. That's such a critical component for what, we've, what, we, uh, what we do in the winter. Um, so looking at the, uh, Colorado snowtail sites, um, the South Platte river basin, when I put this, uh, packet together at the time we were at 83% of normal. Um, and for, I'm sorry, I think that was for the Colorado it was at 83 and the, and South Platte was at 86. Um, after the snow, it looks like the South Platte is at 97%. And the Colorado's at 88%. So we've seen a, a bigger bump this side of the uh, Continental Divide, which we all kind of expected. Didn't put us clear over 100%. However, we still have some time on our side. A lot of these um, snowtail sites don't actually realize their peak until sometime into April, um, even towards the end of April. So another snowstorm or two will help kind of continue to push us over. Um, so the other part that we talk about each month is our CBT quota. The uh, Northern uh, will have their spring water users meeting on the 6th of April. So you can mark your calendars for that. They'll be taking input from municipalities and irrigation companies. Um, they've been hearing from some, um, as you might expect, some of the municipalities are, you know, championing um, you know, a quota maybe in the 70 to 80% where a lot of the irrigation companies are in the 80 to 100%. And so it's, it's likely there'll be a supplemental quota set by the board on the 8th. Um, we'll see what it's going to be. Um, it, it could be anywhere from 70 to 100% after the supplemental is added. We'll just have to wait and see. But um, regardless, I think we're in pretty good shape there. Uh, local storage is at 62%. We've, um, again, this, this snowpack is going to help us quite a bit. It's a, it's a wet snow. It's a, it's not like one you get in November. It's going to help have a higher, uh, peak runoff. These types of snows do, and that'll all, that should all get caught into storage, which is going to be really good. Um, Heather, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and start, um, taking the screen over and if you could pull up some of those graphs. Um, the first one that we have up and let me make sure, yeah, perfect. So the first one we have is Willow Park. So we're kind of gonna, I'm gonna kind of hit these real fast and understand that they're kind of from north to south. Um, 
And when you look at them, the lines that you're kind of paying attention to, the black line is where we're at now. The green line is kind of the, the normal or the mean. And so on the Willow Peak uh, snow site, it kind of, it's done pretty good after this snow, it's 110% of median. So, and it reaches its peak, not until about the 26th of April. So still a lot more time left for it to um, kind of peak out. If we go to the Bear Lake uh, graph, very similar there on the, on the Bear Lake. This single storm really pushed us over that 100%, actually at 112% of, of, uh, of median. And, uh, and I think it true, uh, its peak uh, date for snowpack is the 30th of April. So again, a long time there. So hopefully we can keep getting a little bit more in these next uh, six weeks for that one. Will, uh, Wild Basin. So that one kind of hits closer to home. We're all familiar with that. Feeds the North St. Brain, um, sitting at 93% of, of median. So um, certainly better than we were before the storm, but we're going to still need, we're looking like we're probably somewhere around 12, 13 uh, inches of snow water equivalent. And we'd like to see that get up to 15 or 16. So definitely looking for some more snow up there. Uh, Sawtooth, it, um, it too had a, a, a nice jump, but it's at 85% of, of median. Um, the next one at university camp, it got closer to normal at, at 97%. It actually um, is a site that doesn't peak out until uh, the 2nd of May. So quite a bit of time on that, on that one, but you can see um, where the normal is, we've still got, we're at, um, we've got a lot more snow to get up there to, to finish off at normal. So, uh, Lake Irene, that one there is at 84% of average, a, a good jump, but hopefully we can get some more, uh, Phantom Valley, that one. Moving south, that one's at 92%. That's kind of on the, actually on the upper, feeds some of the upper Colorado. Um, but it's uh, it's one we like to watch. And it's it's probably the, the earliest one to hit its peak, which is usually around April 1st. And then uh, the Berthed Summit one, again, it's at 94% of the median with a, a peak date on the 29th of April. And so you can see that um, the snowpack that, that we just got definitely did help us quite a bit. Um, I think everybody's probably got uh, sore shoulders and wouldn't necessarily like to have another dump like this. However, we definitely appreciate having this uh, moisture that it did provide. So um, we, we really live on these spring storms and but the spring is not over, at least for the runoff. And so we'll see what happens in the next month. And hopefully by the time we uh, talk again, we'll be real close to having all those close to that 100% of average. So that's really all I had to report um, at, this, at this point in time, unless there's some questions. Any questions for Wes on the water status report? Hey, hey Wes. So my at 4288 Brandon Avenue, we are well above average. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure everybody can agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it's very wet and it's, you know, it's, it, you, it's, it's amazing though, you know, 20 inches of snow or whatever is, you know, it, it also shows the impact that a, a good hard rain will have, but this was over a bigger area. And so, um, but good, glad to have it. Do we know what the liquid um, equivalent? It seemed like such a heavy wet snow. It's like slush mm -hmm. basically falling down. Yeah, it was over. It was over two inches of snow water equivalent in this, and so it kind of varied. But usually, when you get it, if you get an inch per foot, that's considered pretty wet, and we had just over that. So yeah, it was definitely very wet. Oh, good. Any other questions for Wes? Okay. Thank you, Wes. You're welcome.
All right, next item is the monthly legislative report, Ken. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, we don't have any action items on the legislative report um, this month. Uh, you may recall that we had um, brought forward, um, just for informational purposes, the uh, bill uh, in, in the legislature concerning the turn back provision uh, for water court. Um, that, um, I thought we might actually be bringing that this month, but it, it's, uh, you know, a slightly more controversial bill. Uh, and so the uh, Colorado Water Congress's State Affairs Committee assembled a group of uh, interested people on both sides of the issue, and they have been amending that bill. The bill's introduced into the legislature, but it's kind of hanging up, whole, being held up. They've got it on hold until the State Affairs Committee can come out with some more language. I think, I think they're really, really close if they haven't actually come out with a kind of a consensus bill on that. Um, so that's probably one we'll, we'll want to look at. And um, who knows, it may, it may run ahead of us and, and may, may actually start moving before next month. <laughs> but um, we'll certainly, as soon as, as, soon as we get a, a bill that's more final, We'll try to, I'll, we'll forward that out, email that out to Waterboard so you can all see it. Scott, you have a question? Uh, not, not a question, just a comment. And Ken, I, I don't even pretend to know where that bill is at, but I did get an update from State Affairs this morning. And it says that the, uh, the bill will go to committee meeting on Wednesday. It's in the Ag Committee with Colorado Water Congress support. So. I think they did take action in Colorado Water Congress this morning. Um, and again, I didn't attend, but somebody in my office is our liaison and it looks like it's at least gonna go to committee hearing. So I think they have agreed on a final version. I just haven't seen it either. So I okay. can't, share any, can't share any news with you there. Good, yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, I had not heard that yet. So that's good to, good to hear. And uh, we'll, we'll forward that, as soon as I get it, we'll forward that bill on to you. Okay, um, is that the only one? Okay, great. So next item, Ken, you're up again with the Windy Gap firming project update. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, just wanted to update the board. We really, obviously, it'll be a while before the um, appeals, uh, action on the appeal to the federal lawsuit on the permit um, occurs. So um, still probably looking late late winter, maybe even even early spring next year before that, hopefully sooner than later, but before that goes forward. Um, the, the West did um, allude to it in the, in the cash and lieu review, but um, the Northern District is currently negotiating with the uh, Barnard Construction, who is the contractor um, to uh, adjust our, our current contract with Barnard Construction has the last start date can be May, like May 5th of this year, which obviously won't be happening. And so um, we'll need to renegotiate. Um, this, this negotiation might be a little more difficult than the last ones because one of the, you know, one of the real big elements of constructing a, a large project like this is fuel cost. You know, you're, you're spending a lot of fuel to, to drill rock, blast rock, and then haul rock, and, and a lot of the cost of the, of the construction is fuel just to do the construction work. Um, unfortunately, fuel is, I'm sure you've all gassed up lately, <laughs> and, and fuel is going up. And so for the contractor to be sitting in a, in a situation where they're trying to look out a year from now to what the fuel costs might be, um, we, we, I, I believe we're probably gonna be hit a little bit with that um, situation. Um, hopefully it won't be, you know, it won't be real, real significant, but we will have to, we'll, we'll, we'll see what that comes. Once we get that, then we'll know where those costs are going to go and, 
and that will that will we don't know if those costs are going to be so high that that it will require uh, uh, an immediate amendment to the contract to the to the allotment contract um, the current allotment contract has a, not a real big contingency but it has um, a few tens of millions of dollars of contingency i, I believe it was uh, then when we signed it last December, the, the, the contract was signed at a $600 million project and the cost estimate I think was, if I remember right, it was like 580,000. So there was some, some contingency sitting there available. Um, we certainly are probably burnt through that um, uh, and, and will when we get the fuel costs back. Uh, but, but we're, we may be looking at coming coming back to look at that allotment contract um, once we get those dollars. Uh, one of the one of, one of the other things that's happening is um, the the allotment contract anticipated um, funding the full six hundred million dollars this spring um, because we were that close to being able to get the contractor going. <laughs> And started, obviously, with the allotment con with the uh, appeals for the uh, permits, um, that that postpones the issuance of bonds, especially the pooled financing bonds, and so um, we may um, the district's looking at whether or not there's language in the allotment contract that allows us to to pull a partial payment on the full six hundred. Um, or whether or not we have to come back in and amend that to allow us to pull that. And their, their attorneys are looking at that right now. So should know that in the next month or so, whether or not we have to amend that. The, the reason, you know, we are gonna be spending some money. Um, there is, are a number of the uh, mitigation projects that became due when we got the permit. Um, and so those have those are ongoing, and those costs are ongoing. Um, also, the uh, Colorado River connectivity channel around the Windy Gap Reservoir, um, that's something we've wanted for years. Um, we got a very healthy uh, Soil Conservation Service grant, Natural Resource Conservation Service grant for that project. And that, but that grant re requires it to be started and completed uh, by a date certain, which if that project doesn't continue to move forward, we could lose five to $6 million in NRCS funding. Um, we are gonna ask NRCS for at least one more year, but um, that, you know, that's a little bit of tender negotiations there. So um, I guess, Right now, the short answer is financing is the thing we're gonna be looking at and probably coming back in the next month or two with additional information on that. Other than that, um, we're kind of in a holding pattern waiting for the federal lawsuit to play out. So be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Any questions for Ken on the Windy Gap update? I'm not seeing any. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, item 9D is the Birch Lake lease. Kevin? Yeah, thanks, Todd. Um, yeah, what we have is a uh, basically a housekeeping item. It's a uh, lease. City of Longmont has been leasing the uh, recreation rights to uh, Birch Lake since about 2006. Um, the primary purpose for doing that is uh, for water quality. Um, in our, uh, for our Wade Gaddis water treatment plant. Um, basically, this is an extension of that lease uh, for another five years. Um, and this is a council communication that's uh, going to council on the 31st or 30th. So if, if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, any questions? As I read it, Kevin, it's, um it's a lease, but it really, the only people that would have access is are the neighbors that immediately surround it. Yes, and that's is correct. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, one of the 
um, issues with Birch Lake is, is there's so many of those houses around um, the lake. And instead of trying to keep them out, basically we're just letting them use that uh, reservoir in exchange for uh, just kind of policing it, self-policing that reservoir. Um, and it's worked out pretty well so far. Okay. Any questions on the the lease? And I, I talked to Ken before the meeting. This is a renewal of an existing lease. It does not take, I guess, council consideration or approval. Ken, is that right? So we don't need to make a recommendation on this. It's just trying to give staff feedback if there is any. That's correct, Chairman. Um, it, it's just uh, we it's going to show up uh, in a couple of weeks on the council agenda, and we wanted to make sure Water Board knew it would be showing up there and, and um, know, knows what it's about. So d does that end up on their consent agenda since it's a renewal of a previous lease or they do they actually do more than that? It'll just be on their consent agenda. It's fairly standard, so probably wouldn't come off. Okay, any questions or comments on the, the renewal of the lease? Okay, looks good, sounds good. Thank you, Ken. Um, looks like we're on to item 10, which is review of major project listings and items tentatively scheduled for future board meetings. Um, uh, Allison brought up, it sounds like St. Brain Left Hand will make a presentation next month to us on the basin Im implementation plan. If I understand right, is there anything else, Ken, or does that board have any other items that they um, <clears throat> are curious about on future upcoming meetings? Um, yes, Chairman. Um, there, there was one quick conversation I wanted to have with the Water Board about the April board meeting. Um, just, I guess, maybe by chance or maybe because it took us a little while to get some items together. Um, we're a little concerned that we're going to have a fairly busy April board meeting. Um, we do have, uh, it appears right now, we've got a development activity that will take a little bit of time. Um, a little bit more than normal. We've got, um, we, went, we weren't able to get all the water use, the per capita water use numbers together uh, that uh, board member Lang asked us to, to return, but we believe we'll have all those together um, for the April board meeting. So we'll have that water, the water use per capita data, uh, tie that in with our, you know, um, water conservation, water efficiency programs. We'll have the St. Rain presentation, and then um, April is also the time when the board reviews the annual water supply and drought management plan. And more than likely we'll have one or two other little things before, <laughs> between now and then. So just wanted to make sure the board was okay with that agenda for next month. Uh, I, you know, I still think we can get it done in two hours, but um, it'll, it'll be a, a, little, a little more hefty <laughs> agenda than normal. Okay. Any issues there for the board if we have a little longer than normal meeting in April? Everybody looks like they're, they're okay with that, Ken, so I guess we'll proceed. Does the board have anything they want to bring up um, on upcoming topics? I'm not seeing any. Okay. Um, on to item 11 is informational items and water board correspondence. Um, Anything there that um, anybody has a question on um, or anything that the board wants to, to bring up at this point? I'm not uh, seeing. Chair, Go ahead, um, I, I did have one graph that I was gonna ask Heather just to pull up. It's kind of a precursor to um, some of the information that we're gonna bring to water board um, hopefully next month uh, as it relates to uh, use per capita. This doesn't actually necessarily speak to use per capita, but, um, and, I, and I realize it's kind of compressed here. What we're looking at is a graph of water use or water production starting back in 2002. And so you can see in 2002, the last, the, what really spurred the, the first initial drought, we had, we had pretty good um, um, participation in cutting back the next two or three years. So in 2003, four and five, it was, it was definitely 
uh, less than 2002. Then in 2006, we kind of had our peak year. That's kind of in 2007, both. We had in those two years, um, if you look at the most that the treatment plant put out on a given month, I think we had eight records broke in those 24 months period. And, and so, and understand that during all this time, the population, the service population has increased. So this kind of, kind of ebbed and flowed a, a bit. Um, last year in 2020, our total production was about a, just about 104% compared to 2002. So if you took a line from 2002 and moved it over for the last almost 20 years, you see that we only have had about four years since that time that has exceeded that total amount of water production. So um, that probably you could argue translates into a lower per capita water use. Now we'll go into more of the numbers of what that kind of looks like, but I wanted to kind of at least give you a sense of what it looks like in terms of Longmont's water production uh, since that 2002 drought. Okay, Roger, you had a comment or question? You're Jim muted, Roger. Roger. There we go. Wes, uh, in defining water production, uh, I mean, is that the equivalent of water usage or what's the difference? So the water production, that's going to be the, what that number actually represents is how much raw water we put into the water treatment plant. So there's some water that's lost through backwash and things like that. And then there's going to be additional water that's lost just through the transmission. So this is the, this is the amount of water that's um, shown at the uh, Nelson Flanders water treatment plant. Okay. Thanks. And then, Roger, I think the what they'll be bringing back will be some of the per capita day use numbers, right? Well, so then you're you're kind of normalizing it based on population, and you'll, you know, as Wes alluded to, the population's been increasing, but our water demand has not. So that'll show up in the per capita usage that's been going down. To so anyway, that that ought to be, you know, and that's kind of what we're looking at is the yardstick of the conservation measures and how effective those are um, over time, so. Right. Um, yeah, and, 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 and also bear in mind, there's different classifications, you know, you have just beyond residential, you'll have industrial and commercial and some of those, which can influence a total production amount, depending on what those are. And so we'll see uh, when we bring that information, hopefully we can kind of break some of that out. So just looking at a single per capita number sometimes can be misleading if you're not careful. Okay, right. thanks, Wes. Okay, any other questions, comments on that? Thanks for the preview there, Wes. All right. Um, so next item, we've got items tentatively scheduled for future board meetings. So we'll revisit the cash and loo in June um, again and hopefully be able to capture the revised um, windy gap cost estimates that, that Ken went over. Um, and that's, I think, all we've got for that. The next board meeting is scheduled for April 19th of next month, so we can mark the calendars for that. And with that, we're on to thir item 13, which is to adjourn the meeting. Anybody else have any questions, comments for the good of the order, Ken? Um, Todd, one thing we did from, forget to mention is that the uh, spring water users meeting for the Northern Colorado Water Conservancy District is going to be the first week of April, and that's going to be a virtual meeting. So if anybody wants to um, attend that, um, you can just go to Northern's website and sign up directly. Um, if you do sign up, please let Heather know. So because if we have more than three board members attend, we'll need to, three or more, we'll need to notice that as a meeting. But that kind of nice to, you know, it's nice to meet in person, but it's quick and convenient if, <laughs> since it's going to be virtual. Well, and as I think most of you know, I'll, I'll be there. So <laughs> I guess it'll be if two more board me members want to join. So anyway, Marsha, did you have something? I thought I'd say your hand. Okay. All right. With that, um, 
I'm sorry, you were muted there. I Marcia. was waving goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you beat me to it. Um, with that, yeah. I'll, I'll adjourn the meeting. So thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.